Anything else? Um, <laughs> uh, there's this thing on Andrew Garfield. He was in a he was texting his uh, group chat that included the two other Spider Men during the time of the Oscar slap. So that's cool. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Marlon Wayne says that uh, his slap put more attention on Jada than it did him or Chris Rock. And uh, by doing that, you put your wife's name in everybody's mouth, which I think is some bullshit because Marla Wayans is so fucking detached from from what's happening to the Internet anyway. Uh, I guess he just has no idea what Red Table Talk is with this bitch putting her own fucking information out there and letting people ridicule her openly. Um, well, so. he, he's he's correct. I mean, I guess, uh, if you yeah. if you think about it, right, like. People talk about red talk tables like once in a blue moon because that shit is on fucking Facebook, right? Yeah. Nobody's really talking about like we're just talking about the big clips. Mm. But now, now people are looking at you with the with a fucking magnifying lens, right? When right. you get slapped like that, and it's purely based around you. Um. Now it's now everything you're doing is being monitored essentially. Right, right. I agree with this. I agree with this for the yeah, most let me part. Pull up, let me pull up the audio. Apparently he was on uh, Big Boy's Morning Show. And so there's a there's an interview. We're not going to watch the whole interview. I'm probably going to jump around. But okay. Martin Wayne's back up in the neighborhood. Martin, I got to ask you this. And I, and I'm pretty here we go. Sure this is the part right here. This is what I want. And, and I haven't asked anyone this okay. that you are in the field of comedy. The Will Smith Uh-oh. Chris Rock. Not the slap. But the, what does that do for comedians when you're on stage and you don't have the presence of the Oscars in an audience like that, just somebody that you probably saying something about their pink outfit. I mean, it just makes you go. If somebody's walking up on my stage, I know that you ain't coming to give me five. Right. Like mm. at a point you got to go, Oh, yeah, he's, she's trying to come harm me. That's when you grab the microphone and you're, so I heard that because mm-hmm. you know honestly you got to protect yourself. I, I, I'm sure the producers hate him for slapping that mic. Elbow for you. Yeah, no I'm, kidding. I'm not waiting for you to. No, I got to. I'm. It's a fight. You come on my stage, we fighting. I'm kick. I'm gonna grab the mic stand, hit you in the face with the mic stand. Right. You ain't coming up on that stage to harm me. We we do jokes. That's what we do. I never. You don't go to a comedy show and be mad when they tell you jokes. It's right. Like, I mean, that's but the I'm Oscars doing. is not a comedy show. Though. I don't think. I mean, they do comedy yeah, bits, they, but. You know. you know, they pay people to do comedic mind. shit, so yeah. it's and it's it's a regular thing for them to do that. So I do my Muay Thai. I guess the context is a little different. Jiu-jitsu. Come, come on, that's why. Hey, yeah, like you said, I'm a shooter. Right, right. Oh, I'm I'm pretty sure if we heard the full context of that, I'm sure it's a little different. I don't think Marlon Wayne's a allegedly. <laughs> I think. Hold on, let me pause this for a second. I think for sure, out of all of the weigh-ins, him and his dad for sure got got legal shooters, like people that will actually Mm. murder somebody. I I I genuinely believe probably everybody in there. That's four generations of very very powerful comedians. They definitely have some people that'll take you off the planet. I I believe. Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's probably Marlon. I'd have if I was that rich, I'd do too. Yeah, absolutely. And it's like, what if Martin Luther King was gay? And he was, you know, not if he was gay, but if the, I said gay people need a gay civil rights leader, like the Martin Luther King or the Martin Luther Queen. Mm-hmm. And I was like, uh, uh, I had a dream that black boys, and I looked at this dude in the audience, I pointed at him, I said, hi, little black boy. And he got up, oh, he was in Alabama. He goes, I ain't gay. I said, all right, bro. Yeah. Calm down. He said, I ain't gay. Damn. <laughs> okay. Said, right, bro, calm down. You know, I ain't gay. I said, Doth, Doth, Protest too much, right? I ain't yeah. I said, is there, is wow. somebody putting a finger in your butt right now? Yeah. I, ain't gay. I was like, you giving up too many streets? And then his wife stood up. He ain't gay. I said, right. Not his wife standing up saying oh, that. Oh man, <laughs> was it on the white side of the oh. family? <laughs> Did you probably tapped into something? Oh yeah, yeah. He, he came. He he threw his drink at me, but he hit the person in front of him, and then. He got up and punched him in the face, and then he was about to come up on stage, and I grabbed the mic stand. I was like, come on through. I'll, if you come on this stage, I'm busting your ass. Hey, man, what did you think? <laughs> yeah. You see that? And then I'm going to stick this microphone <laughs> in your ass, and you're going to be gay. Be a real microphone fiend. <laughs> hey, man, what were you thinking when you first saw it? Because I saw I saw it in real time. I was watching the Oscars. I thought I've been it was waiting. fake. Really? Mm. I honestly I thought. You know what? Hey, hey, I got to stop it there. I also thought it was fake. 
I, also I think everybody it. did. Yeah, because that audio when he when he hit him, it was crisp. I was like, oh, this some they got some good microphones up there. This is a great skit. <laughs> he didn't even hit it like the microphone was great quality. Yeah, it didn't, didn't even ruffle a little bit. I was bit. like, damn, did they ADR this? What the fuck? Did they do this in post? What the fuck? This shit sound legit. Damn. <laughs> That's a great. That was a great sound effect. Yeah. So my weed. I put my weed. I said, either I'm high or Will is high. Right. <laughs> yeah. Like, I was like, and you know, really? I know Will didn't do that, so I got to be high. I didn't, especially Will. Right. Like, you know what I mean? If Fifty Cent did that. You be like, eh. yeah, 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 but yeah, yeah. I yeah. Really don't think Will True. in that moment, right before he gonna get an right. Oscar. And we've been waiting for it. That's why I was watching it live too, though, Marlon. I was watching it live. Because I was ready to see Will Smith have his moment yeah, that we all been waiting yeah. on. He yeah. he deserved that moment, yeah. and I just think the pressure of thirty years of being excellent that's hard to do. And that man just he just snapped. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like you got to check on your f strong friends. Yo, that brother was under a, something was wrong for him to just snap and forget about what he's been working toward yeah. for thirty years. 30 now I will say this. I will say this. Um, because they reference him, you know snapping and spending all this i don't even think it was like a culmination of like the 30 years of work and like all this other pent-up frustration i literally think it was the last two to three years of ridicule of his wife uh publicly humiliating him on a weekly basis um, i agree with that. But, that but that's just <clears throat> me and i think he had he had reached a point where hey you know what this is definitely i mean specifically for chris rock i mean we've even had this conversation off off pod where it was like oh if that was the rock if that was Dwayne Johnson if that was you know Dave Batista if that was you know anybody tougher than Chris Rock would he have done that would he have walked up to on the stage and I think no I think the answer is no yeah I think the answer well is you gotta think no. they they made a joke about uh Jada and earlier fake in the alopecia. show it yeah, was yeah. a yeah it was no no it was uh I forgot what it was they, they made a joke I think it was Regina King. Oh yeah, 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 about how uh, Will uh, getting his oh, COVID uh, shot or something like that, and she said no, all the single men, and she was like, "Yeah, that was that was one of them too." I had I had heard that back. Hold on, I, yeah, maybe we should pull that up. There, there might have been a couple then. God, yeah, man. there was definitely they more were on than one. There was definitely more than one because I was listening to another podcast. I was listening to uh, the Brilliant Idiots, and uh, that was one of the jokes that they referenced. They had said. Uh, Regina King had also made a joke about how, uh, ass essentially alluding to Will Smith cheating on his wife. And, yeah. uh, so I was just like, oh, well, all right. And they made multiple, multiple, like very, very like hardcore jokes that night from other, just other people who weren't comedians, who were just actors making fucking jokes and shit like that. So, uh, I think he had just had it with Chris Rock specifically. Cause you know, I guess him and Chris don't have the best relationship, which, you know, comedians often don't there's a lot of comedians who run up on each other all the time at the comedy store from what i hear which is uh wow apparently, yeah apparently that's normal like joe rogan had <laughs> talked about that on his podcast with uh uh donnell rawlings a couple of years ago and how somebody had ran up on on donnell and uh if you guys don't know who donnell rawlings is he's the guy that goes i'm rich bitch from the Chappelle show ashy larry uh mm. yeah, yeah yeah somebody had run up on the stage on him and he was a he was a C-list comic. It was it was some guy who I had known. I didn't know him, but I had like seen his performances and stuff like that back when I was doing comedy. And like we would do open mics together and stuff like that. So apparently he and Donnell Rawlings had a falling out at the Laugh Factory like a week before or something like that. And he said, I'm going to catch you when, you when you least expect it or something like that. And he pulled up on him at the comedy store. Thought it was funny. Got banned from the comedy store for life. So mm. then there was another comedian who somebody heckled him in the audience and he was talking shit and the dude was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna catch you after the show or whatever. And dude pulled a gun out wow. on him right there. at the, I think it was Slink Johnson actually. Hold on, let me see. Yeah, man, crazy stuff happens. You know, you can't, just like uh, you can't expect or, or tell somebody how to react. You can't tell how somebody else should react either. I mean, you know, Will definitely should have kept mm. his composure. I mean, he's Will fucking Smith. He got too much to lose. So... I mean, that's, but that's just me. You know what's crazy? Hmm. If he had let that joke rock, no one would have cared. I'm telling True. you, it yeah. was a fucking C-tier joke that yep. Chris Rock made, and motherfuckers wouldn't have cared. They wouldn't have batted an eye Nope. Not if he all. didn't go up there and slap, slap the shit out of him. But I will no say, cared. Will Smith is an expert at creating viral moments. 
Let's let's yeah. not forget that. Will Smith is very good at doing this. He even said, you know, his online appearance is his bread and butter. That's how he makes his living. That's how he stays relevant. That's how people go and see his movies, even if they're not great movies. People will go see Will Smith movies because, you know, he's he's an icon. He's a legend. So whether that was fake or not, Will and Chris Rock managed to create one of the most iconic television moments of all time. Easily. I can't think of another Very one. easily. The last one I could think of that actually was significant to me was uh, Justin Timberlake pulling Janet Jackson's titty out on stage. <laughs> <laughs> that's it man was, that one in Lil Nas and Boozy oh Lil Nas and Boozy yeah yeah there we go that one was See? talked about for a while yeah oh 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 and uh, Birdman coming up to the breakfast club saying he oh, was gonna yeah, clap all one. three of them yeah 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 that one was that was crazy that was wild that was hot for a minute can you believe that was like four years ago it was yeah that was a while ago that was hold on one two three two. yeah four yeah hold on let's put you know what let me not um you know, we don't. We don't. We don't gotta worry about it. We don't gotta fact check that one. We remember it. Everybody remembers it. We could just, you know, let's rock with the rest of the interview. Hold on. Yeah. Thirty years of perfection, <laughs> and that yeah. brother, he snapped. And I'm not forgiving it. I'm not excusing it. Right. But I hit him up, and I was like, "Hey, brother, you may want to go get you about three hours of therapy, like fifteen hours this week. You need to sit down with a therapist and have a long talk. Um, something is going on. Right. And that that wasn't." him see i don't have that kind of pressure i've he's been black excellent for 30 years i've been black all right ain't that right, much yeah. pressure <laughs> 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 yeah, he's not been all right do dumb stuff right but him <laughs> no i will yeah are you good with chris rock too I, you probably haven't spoke with him but i hit i hit chris oh up. really yeah i asked him, was he okay like you know they're both my friends i know yeah, them man. both you know what i mean like watching and them that's fight. what it is too man it's suck to see it so, yeah because it's like watching my brothers fight you yeah. know what i mean it's like mm. that's a, not a mm. fight you want to see there's right. no win in that and you know i felt bad for both. i really felt bad for honestly for tony rock right really because yeah because you're you you're making me as a brother you're putting me in a really bad Oh position. damn! This is a per now, perspective I, I didn't even prove my loyalty. Think You're about asking it. me as my brother. That was a wins. Like yo, right? You, yo, mm -hmm. you know now. Now I gotta, I gotta protect you because your whole life I'm be like, yo, we ride or die. We ride it now. That's actually tough. Got... That's actually tough right there. Um, because funny enough, Will Smith has done tons of stuff with both Chris and Tony behind the scenes. When it comes to like producing shows and stuff like that, uh, these are two guys. They put their money with it, specifically Tony Rock. Uh, he puts his money where his mouth is and is constantly producing both live shows, TV shows, uh, writing, editing, directing. Like these guys are in the trenches, right? Mm. So it's crazy that Marlon says something like this. Like, oh, if that was a Wayans, if that was a Wayans, it would be. It, I don't think people understand like how huge these people are in this comedy space so when it think of it this way if comedy itself like we're talking like performing uh making albums doing netflix tv shows anything like that let's say it's it's an island right it's an island yep then you have the weigh-ins we can't even say family at this point the weigh-ins dynasty they have five generations of weigh-ins uh on tv making tv producing tv financing tv you know, financing, mm. producing all of these shows, live shows. They're they're single handedly, if not just them, multiple other dynasties of people, including Chris Rock, Tony Rock, uh, Joe Rogan, like all of these really, really Dave Chappelle, all of these huge comedians are keeping these live places afloat. The comedy store, the comedy cellar in New York, uh, the comedy den in Houston, uh, the Laugh Factory, all of these like comedy venues and stuff are funded by the comedians who have made their living there. So if you cross one of them at all, you can forget about the career. Uh, you you probably can't even work at McDonald's, to be honest with you, because there's a weigh-ins everywhere. There's a weigh-ins everywhere. Mm. There's somebody that knows a rock everywhere. You can be damn for sure know that there's a Smith everywhere. Like the amount of connections that these people have in the comedy entertainment space is honestly like on some illuminati shit like it really is like especially because mm. they're all black too that's the thing what it that's even small so on this island you have 
everybody has like their own little sections of the island, right? Now imagine there's a whole underground base of that island that none of the people who dwell on the island even know about. None of them. The, the Illuminati type, of the, the island. Yeah, the Illuminati of the island. I mean, they're the real people who are making sure the island has resources, the island has fresh water. You know what I mean? And this is in the comedy space. If any one of these people wanted to, and they cut off a resource, or they make sure, like, hey, don't, don't fuck with this guy. Or, because it's Will Smith, maybe they don't fuck with somebody you know. Maybe Will has, like, a a friend or a friend's nephew or something like that who's trying to get into the comedy space and Chris Rock wanted to be vindictive, he could be like, hey, you know what? If I ever see this particular person or anybody I know ever sees this particular person, try to go for an audition, try to go for, uh, try to make a song, try to get a studio session, try to do anything, they go shut them down. Like that is, that is how crazy powerful these people are. Like, and mm. this is just, this is just the, the Negroes. This is just the niggas. Like, just the black people. You know what I mean? Like, so this underground base is only run by black people. Somewhere, somewhere else, the white people got their own, you know, underground base, but they be they be touching kids there and stuff, man. I don't know what the fuck they got going oh, on over there. Oh. You don't think, you don't think... Uh, nah, nah, I don't, it's not that, it's... Yeah, I, yeah, it's, it's, it's real. I know. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's that's, that's the unfortunate part. So, it's so crazy to see... Like, these two titans, it's not like it was just, like, some C-list actor who Chris Rock told a joke about his wife, and he walked up and slapped Chris Rock, and now he's never going to work again. Like, if anything, Will Smith's probably not affected by this. Like, his money is not affected by this at all. I really think, yeah. like, there's probably even brands coming out of their pockets now, like, hey, with Will, we actually uh, want to work with you and your wife because we support this alopecia charity and blah, 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 blah. We want to give you $50 million. And then there may be, you know, maybe Gerber probably doesn't want to work with Will Smith. You know, maybe they had an idea for like a Will Smith Gerber commercial or something. He was going to do a voiceover and they were like, yeah, we could dead that shit. Maybe he was going to produce a show or something like that. Uh, I know his ties with Netflix. Like they're like, hey, you know what? Let's put everything on hold for a little bit. Uh, but that's not because of the Oscars. I, I think that was because of funding and some other stuff but the oscars didn't mm. be there so it's just Bro. so interesting to see yeah when you explain I, it like that it's actually crazy yeah so i mean it's a very very small space in comedy already and so when it's black people it's like oh it's even smaller like way way smaller because black comedians will do this thing where they may not even know it but they have a very crab in a barrel type of mentality because really Sometimes when you're getting booked on shows, it's like there's almost no guarantee because there's just so much talent in a very small mm. space. But then when it comes time to break outside of that, like say, you know, some John Mulaney or something is is holding, you know, auditions for a, a tour or something like that. And he wants, you know, one black comic. So now it's like all of those crabs in that barrel, only one of them is going to get a shot at John Mulaney's tour. And it's just like he's not even, you know like a triple a star comedian you know what i mean so mm. uh, that's that's uh, it's tough to see i hate it i hate seeing it i hate seeing it so what are you about to say you kevin hart, <laughs> Me, kevin hart uh dave Chappelle, uh bill bellamy and um i forgot who else but it was one night we was all on stage at the same time at the comedy cellar oh, all five these great comedians doing is a it was such a funny hour. Chris Rock, we was all of such a funny hour. We was just all up there. All right, I need to stop there for a second. This is one thing I actually hate about famous comedians. Uh, and this is, this is like, was a huge factor of me quitting stand-up comedy. Well, I quit because I suck. But also because a lot of times this will happen. So what B li like B-list and A, like short, like A-minus list comedians will host the nights at you know, very famous clubs, the Comedy Cellar, the Comedy Union. Uh, well, the Comedy Union's closed down now. Uh, mm. The Comedy Store, Laugh Factory, stuff like that, right? They'll host these events and they'll pick the lineup and stuff. If one of these fucking comedians comes, you can, you're can you getting cut from the lineup. And that, mm. that has happened to me six times where I was like, oh, this is going to be my, you know, second, third performance at this specific venue. And next thing you know, 
Chris Rock will show up. Tony Rock will show up. Marlon Wayans will show up. Damon Wayans will show up. Dave Chappelle will show up. Chris Tucker will show up. Like, you'd be real surprised. These dudes just decide to randomly pop up at these comedy venues to watch. And then they'll get their accolades like, oh, shit, this person's in the building, blah, 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 blah. If you're, if there's a lineup of 10 people and you're number 10, guess what? You're getting cut. Mm. You get it. And sometimes you could be on the list. You could be number five. And if this person decided to bring multiple comedians with them, you could forget about it. Like the rest of the lineup is getting cut. And guess what? There's an audition just to get on that initial lineup. So you have to go back to that audition again to get back on that lineup. Damn. Just for a chance to get back on the lineup. So you got to wait two, three, four, five weeks before you can go back on stage. So, and that shit used to annoy me so fucking much it was great to see like legends perform in very very tiny spaces where there's like a crowd of 15 20 people because if there's no supreme a-list bangers you're not really selling like 500 tickets to a to a you know 100 person venue it's not happening you'll Mm. be lucky to get 20 30 40 i mean we're talking like me and the rest of these guys are fucking F-list comedians. There may be a couple ones in there that are C-list, that are, like, on their way up and, like, having conversations with, like, NBC or CBS or something like that just for writer credits and stuff like that, just for a chance to be on SNL. This is our moment. Like, hey, we need this five and a half minutes in order to book another job. If I don't get this five and a half minutes because Marlon Wayans decides to show up and have an hour long set on a two hour long show, it's like, bro, what the fuck? And he, and, and the thing is like, of course these people are, ro- are comedy royalty, but like, you cannot, you can't be at the comedy cellar during a D-list show and then decide to have you and four of your friends just hop up on stage and take an hour of fucking comedy time, bro. Some of us, uh, some of us out here actually really want to create careers and you're in the way of that. Mm. Can, we, can we necessarily get upset about that? Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know about that. I don't know about that one. You don't see me walking up to Marla Wayans and be like, hey, bro, you took my five minutes. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, not, not, there's no way I'm saying I'm telling Marlon Wayans he took five five of my minutes, but he did, he did. Marlon Wayans actually owes me five minutes. That sounds crazy. Let Are you banned that. from? Come <laughs> on. No, I'm not. No, 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 oh. no, not me. Not anymore. Not me. Not me. I'm not banned. No. I mean, if she finds out I'm going back to performing, I'm I might be banned. But oh, okay. Yeah, we don't talk <laughs> about that. We don't talk about that. That's yeah, not, yeah, yeah. That's it's not just... a Patreon topic, man. You got you got. Oh, relax, okay, bro. my bad. My bad. My bad. <laughs> In the photo, Questlove and his afro is on stage with us. I didn't remember yeah. him being there. Yeah. <laughs> right, right there with the drum sticks in it. There's not even drums on the stage. I was like, All right, let's see. Passive. I would just tell people, man, like, I didn't talk about it a lot on air. Yeah. I was just like, man, it just sucks. It was you know what I'm saying? It was terrible. Yeah, it, was not, it just sucks. It was man. not great to see. It didn't feel good. And, you know, like I said, I was concerned for both my friends. Like, yeah. you know, honestly... You know, and you know, I talk about it a little bit in my my set. I'm not right. gonna I'm not gonna go all the way there, but uh, I just you know, I think that by trying to take your name out of one person's mouth, now you put your wife's name oh. everybody's mouth. Yeah. Mm. Now mm. comedians are terrorists. Now it's like oh, yeah. <laughs> comedians are terrorists. <laughs> now everybody it defeats the purpose. Everybody got a Will Smith, a, a yeah, Chris Rock. Man. You know, Jada Joe. Right. Now, you know, people got a half hour. Yeah. You know? so y'all stick around y'all radios. We got Marlon Wayans in the neighborhood. Big boy's Big neighborhood. Boy. Big boy. Anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's very interesting, man. It's very interesting to see this. I, I do like Marlon's take on this. It's a little... I mean, I have my own personal, you know, thoughts. I, Opinions, I thought, yeah. Yeah, I thought Will did a, did a great... Did, he was trying to do a great thing. The idea was behind it. But, I mean, you know, women will have you do some crazy stuff, man. So, fair, fair. Yeah. Speaking of women doing crazy stuff, let's go ahead and get this out of the way, man. Let's talk about this Amber Heard situation, man. Oh wow, that was you a, know wow. she shit on Flaps this man's everywhere. bed, bro. Oh, thank you, thank you. That was actually great. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, I be trying, I be trying. I set it up ahead of time. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, you know, I found out this woman shitted on his bed and told him he could lie in it. Uh, it was either her or her friend, I believed in yeah, the article. Either way, that's that's absolutely wild to have an ass ready to just shoot out on command <laughs> nah on command is crazy <laughs> that is I don't fucking have... wild bro 
<laughs> she said, I wonder how long she was hovering over the pillow before she was like, I'm, yeah, it's, you just fucking wait, Johnny. You just fucking wait. Like, yo, what the fuck is this bitch doing? Like, you didn't try to tip her over or nothing? Like, <laughs> I, I'm confused why you would do that, though. Like, even men don't do that. Yeah, that's. I don't. I've never heard a man to be like, you know, what? I'm going to shit on this motherfucker's bed. Um, yeah. And men do some stupid shit. I'm going to use this. I'm going to use this as an excuse. If my girl ever pissed me off, I'm going to shit on her pillow. Huh? Yep. Yep. I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. You're going to try it? I'm going to try it, man. I really, I really think some, some of these women out here really, they need to just, they need to lay in what they are. Uh, you know what I mean? Uh, what? They do. What the fuck are you talking about? Some of these women ain't <laughs> shit laying shit, bitch. Okay. What? Well, that's... Fair, but I don't know about shitting on their bed or no, their pillow. Did it. She Does that it make it acceptable if she yes. did it? Yes, yes, absolutely. She's losing her court case. I don't think that's very acceptable at that's all. Actually, that's different. She was doing some some wild, crazy shit outside of just shitting on that nigga pillow. So yeah, she said she was faking injuries with nail polish. You seen that? Yeah, and th- you know what's funny? I I read into that. So for people who don't know. Amber Heard was saying uh, that Johnny was physically abusing her, which is obviously false, not true. It's been conducted, the research investigation, not true. Mm. Then she said, oh, I used to have to cover up my marks with this specific skincare company, right? Now keep in mind, this was in 2016 that she was saying this. She said this happened in 2016. The company that makes the makeup said, how can that be true? Because we didn't start making makeup until 2017. How is that possible? Or it was like 2017, 2018. Yeah, 2017, 2018. It was like two years later. And bro, I ain't never seen some shit like this. That, I, that was a really uh type of moment. Uh, bitch, what? <laughs> nah, you getting called out for your shit is crazy. That is... That shit is wild. Yeah, that's tough, man. I Sheesh. You can't even get the facts right. You, you couldn't even make up a date? Uh-uh. Oh, that was even close? Oh, no. Yeah, wow. That's I'm not crazy. getting exposed like that. Mm-mm. That's crazy. Man, this case is going in the fucking shitter, and I mean that with all the, the irony in the world. This is really going in the history, <laughs> man. I think between... I was Man, I was talking to my homegirl about this. Um, you know, I was talking to Anime Girl. And yep. I was telling her between Jada... Amber Heard, and what's that other girl's name? There's three of them. It was a trifecta. I remember I was talking to her about it. Fuck. Mm. Anyway, between at least those two, I was like, you bitches really ain't shit, huh? <laughs> mm. I, I, I really was talking to her about it. I was just like, why would anyone ever want to be in a, in a committed relationship at all? Like when a woman can make you feel this way. Like when she can make you go not make you but you feel like you need to do all of these things or put up with certain things in order to love this woman and then she not treat you the best you know what i mean like that's tough that's tough to look at like if i'm a younger yeah, dude if i'm like 18 19 and i'm seeing this and i see red pill content let's not let's not let's let's not discredit that either i'm seeing fresh and fit i'm seeing Oh um, no! If you Kevin watch your Samuels. fresh and yeah, if you watch your fresh and fit, you fucked up. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, but there are dudes who live like that, though. There are li- dudes who literally like who think fresh and fit have it figured out. You know what I mean? Like, oh, they, they must have something going on. They got all these girls on their show every week. But it's like came out. You know what's his name? The dude with the pointy ass nose pays girls to go up there. So you know it's it's crazy. And he he solicits sex on sugar baby websites. That dude is a simp. Oh okay. yeah, Myron. Yeah, that dude is a certified simp. He paying for pussy. Like, what? <laughs> Did you confused. know that so less than one percent of the world's population is over six foot? Like, you remember that? Oh, when he had that shit in his so sugar salty, baby bio, man. he's so salty. That man. shit was hilarious. That guy, I, I'm not. I mean, he's a fucking moron, but it's not like I'm gonna sit here and say some of the other stuff that I say on on this show and be like, that guy needs his ass kicked. Like he doesn't. That guy needs to be loved. Um, I really think that dude needs to be. Needs to I find, uh, don't know. Uh, he needs to find I don't something, know about that. man. He needs to find God. Find Christ. I mean, you reap what you sow, and when you talk about shit like that, and you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. You you paint this portrayal of certain people. 
I mean, you get what you deserve at the end of the day. I mean, think about it, man. But if if people if I go on TikTok and you know I'm finding red pill content all the time and dudes just hating women and saying well, you know women aren't good for anything except for a pussy hole, like you know what I mean? Like a lot of that. Nah, who they, said that? That's bro, a wild statement. Yo, 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 yo who I said came that? across that TikTok the other day, man. I seen it and it was just like this guy was reacting to a, a fresh and fit clip. Where this guy was like, oh yeah, if I if I get a prostitute and I get a maid and I can cook and clean myself and I can do all this other stuff, what do I need a woman for? And the guy responded in in the reaction clip, he said she ain't nothing good for a pussy hole, but a pussy hole. And I was like, yo, this is fucking wild. And then as a as a source, he referenced Kevin Samuels. He said, if I know how to cook, clean, bathe myself, I can do all these other things that a woman is supposed to be responsible for. I can't use a bitch for nothing other than a, a other than a pussy hole. And then I was That's like, I was crazy. Destroyed. I instantly I reported that to TikTok. I was like, "How is this allowed on the platform? But you can't allow titties juggling. I don't I don't understand. Mm. I, I don't understand. Why do you keep taking down my titty jiggling videos? But you leave this shit up anyway. There are dudes who who live this life who believe that that is how you should treat women. That's how you should talk to women. And it's really sad, bro. I mean, there's more bitches out here for us, but we don't leave the house anyway. So it's like, <laughs> yeah, no cap. You know, we too busy trying to be millionaires in in, in our mom's basement. No pun intended. True. So wait, what do you mean by that? Uh, at one point in time, I did live in my mom's basement, not her actual oh. basement, but like. I thought you were talking about me. And I'm living in a place <laughs> that's the size of a basement, so I mean, I can't really, you know what I mean? Oh, that wasn't. I really oh, thought you were talking oh, about yeah, me. No, no, that's no, what no, I said. No. I was trying that's to That's my bad, bro. That's my bad. I didn't even. I was sitting here like. I was trying to make the a fuck point. What is going on here? Yeah, my bad. I was trying to make a point, <laughs> and it like flew over my head, and I tried to catch it. <laughs> I tried to catch oh, it yeah. as I said. I was like, oh shit. Um. But yeah, man, I mean, some of us are, are really dedicated to our craft and stuff like that. We're trying to be millionaires the hard way. Uh, so, you know, it's just, it's so strange to me that there are people that truly believe that this shit exists. And so when they see things that validate their existence and the things that they believe in, like a Jada, like a Amber Heard, like a, a Brittany Renner, stuff like that, like, holy shit, man, like, <sighs> It got to be tough out here for these guys, and it's just like, man, y'all gotta, y'all gotta get some therapy and some love, man. Y'all gotta, I don't understand. I feel bad for the next generation. That shit is, Gen Z is fucked when it comes to relationships. Cause I be, between being too horny on TikTok and not horny enough on Twitter, man. This is, y'all got it rough. This is a dilemma. Yeah, this is, this is. I'm scared. I'm honestly scared. Like if I don't, any of the girls that I've ever talked to, if if I don't end up like. Settling down, I'm probably just going to be com in a committed situationship forever. Um, mm. You know, if stuff goes south with, you know, the situation I'm in now, uh, which is definitely possible because she's fucking walling out later, lately. But uh, for another time. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely another time for sure, for sure. Um, but yeah, man, I, I don't know. I don't know how I would think. I don't know how I would... You know, and then here's the worst part. The, the other role models that exist that are supposed to be teaching you how to respect women and stuff like that are supposed to be your dads, your uncles and shit like that. Where the fuck are these dudes at? You know, how come they don't have famous YouTube channels and shit like that? How come we don't have somebody's like uncle, you know, teaching us how how to wear cologne and put on watches and stuff like that without oh, we do. being disrespectful to women it, oh. I mean, Kevin Samuels does it, but like, also at the same time, he turns around and he shits on women at the same time. I mean, are some of there's these this, women deserving uh, of it? Yes, but, but, it's like there's this uh, one channel that I, I like to watch that like, uh, it's him and his dad, mm -hmm. and he not only does he do like alcoholic beverages, but he also like teaches people shit about in shorts. Like he did one where he ties a tie, or he shows you how to tie a no tie shit. and shit. Yeah, Johnny drinks. Mm. They do really good shit. I like their stuff. They they do something similar to that. They teach you a lot of shit about, uh, like, getting ready for for gatherings, fucking golfing for some reason, but whatever. Mm -hmm. Uh, packing a bag for a flight. You know what I mean? How to Damn. match your watch and shit. Mm. Yeah, because I definitely do, yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I do black shit. and gray everywhere with the blue shoes, man. That's it. Yeah, they do great stuff, and they do they. Even, do drinks as well. Oh shit! And reviews and shit. That. I fuck with that. Yeah, so yeah. Let's go ahead and go check that out. Uh, what was yeah, it again? Yeah, of course. Johnny drinks. Johnny drinks. Okay. They they already had a million, so they they got it. Oh, so they got bread. Okay, they don't. They got it. Yeah, they got it like that. All right, for sure. We don't subscribe to us though. Please, uh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, yeah, man. I I don't. I think I got everything off my chest. I don't really. <laughs> I was kind of hey. just winging it. 
I mean, we we hit everything, right? Just about, yeah. I mean, Amber Heard's a piece of shit. Uh, she's getting there's a petition apparently with 2.5 million it. signatures uh, to get her re- digitally removed from Aquaman two. Uh, I did see that. It. Yeah, yeah, I'm here for it. Um, you know, uh, Jason Momoa has come out this week and hinted at uh, well, he not only supports Johnny Depp directly. So he made a post about Inst- on Instagram about that. So that's very direct. Wow. Um, yeah, I know, which is huge. Uh, <laughs> also, is the huge. director of Aquaman, uh, I want to. It's not John Watts. It's it's the same guy who did the fucking first Fast and Furious. He he also did that. Um, and then mm. one of the X Men too. He's also the director of uh, Aquaman one and two. Um, he said how much of a nightmare it was to work with Amber Heard during the first movie. So, and then the second one, because she's in it in a limited capacity, it was a lot easier. But he also said production in general for Aquaman 1 was just hell on earth. Uh, just conflicts with Warner and stuff like that uh, is what I read in, in his uh, article. Um, but yeah, man, I mean, I really hope this girl never gets another piece of acting gig ever again, honestly. You know, uh, you know what's crazy? Huh. There was a, uh, you remember that? We we had talked about this previously. You remember that tweet? This uh, one of the directors or somebody said they were like, "Oh, I don't." Uh, w- regarding Amber Heard, they were like, "Oh yeah, uh, I don't really pay attention to what goes on in the Twitter space when oh, they're yeah, talking yeah, about yeah, the yeah, Johnny yeah. Depp th- mm-hmm. the situation." Mm-hmm. That was a long time ago, though. That was a very I remember that. I was like, "Oh, it's very interesting how people uh, Flip, switch up." Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He goes from not not giving a shit at all to like, oh yeah, this is completely unacceptable. Like, yeah, yeah. I it's... think it's because he didn't know the details of it. Also, like that that kind of does solidify the fact that he does not spend time on the internet looking at things. Uh, mm. But also for him to candidly say what he said is also very uh, uh, not very smart. Not very smart in the digital age. That's what I think. Mm. I think I know what he meant to say. He was like, hey. I don't pay attention to this stuff. I can't have an opinion. That's basically what he meant to say. But what he said is, what bitches do, bitches do. And uh, anybody that cares about any of that is fucking stupid. And so by him saying that, instead of, hey, this is none of my business. I don't know. I don't spend time paying attention to that. Twitter's not a real place, is now his, like, take on it. So, and for him to flip and be like, yeah, she's always been a nightmare. And this, that, and the other thing. Funny how you flip and flop when you find out a bitch is shitting on a pillow. Crazy, huh? Fair. crazy so but uh i don't know man personally i love women uh that are crazy <laughs> uh obviously that oh, has okay been, that has been shown not only on this show but on the main channel as well i still have episodes like i went through my log of unlisted and privated videos a couple of weeks ago there's been mm. there's like multiple videos of og just like fucking going ballistic on me in the footage that i didn't edit out and it's just luckily these videos are unlisted and they're privated and stuff. But there was one video where she actually made me cry, like on stream, uh, because like, oh. as I was talking to her and she was like, "Yeah, your YouTube channel's a waste of time and all this other stuff and blah 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 blah." And she's like, "You can't do simple." Th- I mean, looking back in hindsight, she did ask me to do a very easy task, and I decided to live stream and play video games during four hours of time when a task the task that she asked me to do would have taken 10 minutes so and she just had reached her breaking point so i understood at that point but for her to say the very venomous things that she said to me that day was like okay i get that you're speaking out of anger but like holy shit yo this is this is crazy so and then you know i still once again tried to continue to love that woman so you know crazy i remember and not to not to bring it up but there was one time you uh you were on stream and you had got a call, and you were on that call for like thirty minutes, and you came off mad aggressive. Mm. That was years ago, though. That was like 2017, 2016. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was l- old. It was very old. Yeah, it must. Have been I remember bad. seeing that. I was like, "Oh shit!" Yeah, I actually went through uh, Twitch clips, and I had to go and delete a lot of those. Um, so yeah. There is the the crying one. We were playing Fortnite. Uh, that one's that one's still up. I think I was playing Fortnite with Deacon. Um, so that's the only one that's like not unlisted. That one's public. So I are just, you gonna like, have to go go and take that down? No, nah, I'm not gonna take that down. Absolutely oh. not. It happened. I mean, take it down for what? Like, you know what I mean? It's yeah, not, yeah. It's, it's, it's not gonna it's damage me in any way. It's not really gonna damage her because it's not like it's whatever. You know, it's in the past. Yeah, yeah. I mean, now if I get like 
millions of subscribers and somebody brings that up and it kind of like gets circulating through stuff and it's like just Jay is crying because his girlfriend's bitching at him or something like that like then I'd probably <laughs> feel a little embarrassed and I'd be like yeah I'm gonna go ahead and take that down so but if it doesn't happen mm -hmm. it doesn't happen you know what I mean so it is what it is uh, true but, but yeah man uh, loving somebody will have you do some crazy shit so yeah you know, of course and putting up with some crazy shit so of course with that said pr protect your neck kings uh, with that being said do not shit the bed Yes, yes. Unless you're both consenting and you're into that. Fair, but either way, don't ruin your sheets. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hop in the bathtub, King. Hop in the bathtub. Yeah, Let that somewhere else. On you. Somewhere, yeah. Or yeah, put yeah. a towel, towel down. Towel? Put it, mm, you're going to put multiple. Some, no. A tarp. Put a tarp down. Yeah, yeah, put a tarp down. Yeah, put a tarp yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. Today perfect. I'm looking at you. Come on over, bro. Huh? 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 What? Why would you look at the time? Hey, wow, man, there must shit, be somebody bro. else in this room, bro. Did you hear that? Ooh. Somebody's in yeah, the room? Yeah, that shit was wild. I don't hey, know man, who said yeah, that at I all. I can't record these episodes when uh, I think there's a ghost in my shower or something talking about Zendaya's shitting on my chest. I can't. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just... Did you hear that? Hey, ghost wilding out, bro. Ghost was wilding out. Anyway, we want to thank you guys for subscribing to the Patreon. Uh, thank you, every single one of you. Uh, we really, 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 really appreciate it. Uh, the new episode will be out on Monday, if I'm not too hungover on Sunday. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the new podcast episode will be out on Monday. We want to thank you guys so much for uh, donating your hard-earned work. We we know we're very, very inconsistent, but we're we're getting it together. So uh, I mean, we've been putting out more episodes. So True. I mean, this one will probably be an exclusive for a little bit, and then we'll post it on the main channel. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, uh, But we want to thank you guys for listening. Uh, is that it? Plank, do we want? Yeah, if you'd like to hear more, please hit the Patreon, patreon.com slash canonculture, C A N O N C U L T U R E, no spaces. Woo! Spice As always, we appreciate you and make sure to keep it canon.